Hello, welcome to Go On Lane. I'm not quite ready yet because I haven't done my Facebook or anything yet. But anyway, welcome to Yarn Lane, uh, the only shopping channel uh, dedicated to all things yarn, whether it be crochet or knitting or both, because we're doing both today. Catherine's here with me. Uh, now, you can get in touch uh, three different ways. One is you can send us an email. Two, studio at yarnlane.com, studio at yarnlane.com. Or you can send me a message on Facebook. There it is. I'm just trying to find it myself. There it is. Uh, or you can go to the website. So you just go to the website there, www.yarnlane.com. Uh, press the what? Oh, now how am I going to do this? Drink and talk at the same time. There we go. They can either send a message there in the little box, maximum 150 characters, or that's it. Now, hello, says Hannah, the producer. Right now, if you go down the screen, you'll see everything on pre-order that we've got today. So there's two jumpers, lots of hooks, more jumpers, more jumpers, more jumpers. Now, some are knitted, some are crocheted. I have to say, and I'm not being negative now, they're not the best pictures. They, they look much like, you'll see, because we've got them all here. They look much, much nicer in real life than they do on those. Catherine's even wearing one. It looks fabulous on. Look, there you go. Isn't it lovely, that one? That's a grey and grey and what's a mild, uh, uh, variegated wool, isn't it, yarn, that one? In fact, it's not wool, is it? It's cotton. Okay, so what I'm going to do before we do any stitching, I'll take you through all everything that's for sale, and then Catherine's going to show you a little bit from each of the patterns. So, Hannah, where would you like me to start? A short sleeve spice, that's this one here. I've got it, I've got it here. I've got it here. Right, now you can choose whether you do this one with sleeves or sleeveless. So, you get uh, one, two, three, four, five balls of yarn. Now, it's, it's cotton, I believe, this one, isn't it? Cotton, 100% mercerized cotton. You get 100 grams of ball. It feels heavy, this one. It's nice, isn't it? And you get the pattern. There she is. Right, the pattern comes from size bust 30 to 44. And there's enough yarn to, well, there you go, the largest two, uh, hang on, I've got five. The cap sleeve, um, the two, large. yeah, so the five balls are the largest size. If you make the smallest size, you'll have some left over. And this one is knitting, is it? This one knitting, yeah, double knit. Hang on a sec, I'll show you the real thing in a second. You need needles. I'll let Catherine to explain that to you. Right, so this one here, knitted by Julie Edwards, is the sleeveless version. It's lovely colour, isn't it? Is that called spice then? That colour called spice? Have you, can you see who's knitted yours? Oh, we'll come to that in a second. Though. She's got it on the label stuck on the back. So, so that's the sleeveless version there. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm pushing that to one side. The one Catherine's wearing is this one. Same design, just a different yarn. And it's got a sleeve on it. Give us a twirl. Oh, no, don't give us a twirl. <laughs> don't give us a twirl. Just show us from the front. There you go. It's pretty, isn't it? I Lovely. really like That's the variegated the yarn. Yeah, and the little sleeve. And you're nice. saying you'd wear it like that with your little... With I would. I'd layer it up now because no? it's, it's not quite warm enough to... It is beautiful. And who made yours? Uh, Andrea Plume. Andrea Plume made that one. So in this one, you get the same pattern I just showed you. Plus, now this is lovely, this yarn, isn't it? The grey... A kind of variegated of the different colours of grey. Isn't that lovely? So you get five balls of that, enough to make the biggest one. There she is. Same design as I just showed you, but with the sleeves in. It looks what? Looks completely different. No, I just got confused. It looks completely different in the variegated cotton. Yes. That's what it is. So that's that one. Then where do you want to go after <coughs> that then, Han? The pink one. This is a lovely pink. It's a very soft, dusky pink. So now this pattern, this has got a lace back to it, this one. This has got a lace back. So we've got it in pink, which uh, Catherine's going to show you in a second. I love it because the all the detail is down the back. From the front, it looks like the sweetest little jumper. And then the back, you've got this lovely, lovely lace work. And look at the little scallops around the neck and the hem, uh, the neck and the um, sleeves. Oh, and the hem. Who made that one, Catherine? Margaret Chapman. Margaret Chapman made that one, the pink one. So you get four balls of the cotton. 
What colour have we called this? Oh, just pale pink. You see, it doesn't have a shade on the packet. It doesn't tell you what, what colour it is on the packet. Yeah, it's code one. Oh, no, no, I haven't even got a shade. No, I've got dye lot one, shade nothing. So I don't know what that is. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's beautiful. It's got like a pearlescence to it. What say, Ham? Yes, but I'm, I'm sorry, it's odd that they don't write it on here, isn't it? They don't write it because normally it's written on there. Anyway, pale pink. But that one also comes in grey, le gris, which I think I must have that one. Mm -hmm. I? Yeah, I've got that one. So have a look at the there. Oh, I quite like it in the grey. Marilyn Dixon made mine, and this is the most popular one so far. Look, that's the front, right? And then there's all the lace work on the back. And I do love the little scalloped edge around the neck. This is the most popular of the hour so far. And that's Marilyn Dixon made that for us. It's lovely, isn't it? So that's the grey one. And then, now this next one's got more balls of yarn. Oh, crochet, crochet. Does crochet take up more, more yarn? Than, yeah. oh, I didn't know that. Takes up more yarn. You think it would take up less because there's only one stick? <laughs> White or blue first? White one first, that's you. These are our crochet designs. So you get, oh, blimey, one, two, three, four, five, six balls here. There's the pattern. Well, we'll find that out when we come to do crochet, won't we? You should know that, Elia, being a mad crochet person. No, crochet, person cr mad for crochet, not mad. Yes, I'm fine. Words aren't coming out. It's been a long day. That's the white one. And then we also have the same thing in this sort of dusky Air Force cornflower blue. Smoky blue, this one's called. So again, you can either have it with or without sleeves. My one is made by Adele Coward. There you go, Adele. That's the one that you made. Sorry, did I ask you who yours? No. Oh. My white one is by Millie Mason. Millie. Millie, Millie Mason, Mason made the white one and Adele Coward made the blue one. That's the white one there. Thank you, Millie. And here's the blue one, Smoky Blue, by Adele Coward made that for us. So, that, that's all the for sale. Oh, no, now I've got to tell you. The fish are back in stock. Oh, no, that's tomorrow. <laughs> I've got confused because I've unpacked tomorrow already. Tomorrow's another day, isn't it? Sorry. We'll carry on. Needles and hooks are underneath me. Underneath me on pre-order. Right, so Catherine, what, so where, where are we going to start? We're going to start with that one. The lace, the one I'm wearing. The one you're wearing. And what are you going to show on that The lace sweater. So I'm going to show you the pattern. Perfect. Because the pattern's actually, it's actually very similar on this one and the lacy backed one. You do the pattern in the same way. Okay, perfect. Um, and I have done a little bit. Please don't take any notice that the yarns I'm using are completely different to the colours of the yarns in the packs. Oh, okay. Those colours hadn't come in. Right. So when I was prepping the press, for the was. show, absolutely. So it's an eight row pattern. Yeah. And you can see it's it's got a sort of moving little pattern oh, nice. of, of does, In the variegated wool, doesn't it look different? Yes, it looks totally well, different. You don't see the pattern quite as much, I think, in the variegated no, yarn. No, as exactly. in the As in the spikes. As in the... Oh, we've lost it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you see the, the pattern more in the spikes. So you get a totally different effect, don't you, actually? I'll just show that one. Oh, where have you gone? Where are we going? There you go. There you go. It's lovely. They're like le leaves almost, leaf patterns, aren't they? Yes. Okay. So across these eight rows, you've got to follow it carefully so that your little holes all come out in the right place and you do get these little leaf shapes. But what you'll notice is that there is sort of a central row of knit stitches that go all the way up. So what mm -hmm. I've done here is I have cast on my sleeve which was uh, 61 stitches. Um, we're using four mil needles. It knits like a uh, double knit. Right. So if you've not used cotton before, cotton's actually lovely to knit and crochet with. It's really soft. And mm. Some people are a bit sensitive to wool and can't always wear it. It oh, can make yes, them a yes, bit yes, itchy. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Whereas co so cotton's a really yeah. good alternative. And it's 100% cotton, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
So four mil needles just work at light double nip, lovely and soft. So I've cast on 61 stitches and I've done my first eight rows. And then on the sleeve, you have to start to decrease to get the shape of your sleeve. But you've also got to keep your pattern. So this is the slightly tricky bit in this. Mm -hmm. So the way, because it doesn't tell you where to start, it just says follow the pattern decreasing as you go. So what you need to do is keep your eye on where that central knit is because you can work it out then where you are in the pattern. So I'm at a point where I've got to decrease the stitch at the beginning of a row and I'm going to do that by knitting the two together which is where that first knit stitch is. So is that can, what the post, is that what you call it in the post? Yeah, that yeah. little sort of, almost like the little vein of the leaf. You can yeah. see they run all the way up, don't yeah. they? So they're quite a good marker to look for. So when I find that on my row instructions, I can then go, OK, I've done that bit, so I'm going to start with the next bit, which is a yarn forward, so that my hole comes in the right place. Right. Does that sort of make sense to yeah. you? Yes. So you've just got to keep your eye on it oh. so that that happens. So I've knitted, I've, I've knitted two together to decrease the stitch. Then it tells me to put my yarn forward. Now I've got, it tells us we're going to slip two together knit-wise. You don't often do that. You usually knit, do one. So I'm going to slip two stitches off. I'm going to knit one. And then I've got to pass the two stitches over the top, both of them. Like so. Okay, so that's going to make a hole. Yarn forward again, knit two. Okay, then we're going to carry on with that all the way to the end. And I can tell I've got it right because I'm doing my knit one and it is falling in that central bit. So if you've started and you're creasing and you're thinking, oh, my knit ones aren't coming out in the right place, go back because you've not started your pattern in the right okay. spot. So that's really how to watch it. And then you just knit the normal uh, row. And then you just then. knit the normal row, as you would, all the way along, and hopefully your pattern will turn out right. But you don't, having, you know, done this lovely, lovely pattern, you don't suddenly want to see it kind of wobbling, no, of course wobbling not. around. You've Did got you to keep it straight. Did you just take two off at the same time? Then? Yeah, so this is the bit where you're slipping two together and then you're passing two stitches over that, which doesn't happen very often. You usually only do one. I'll do it again in a minute as we right, go okay. across. Uh, Claire says, we need woolen tops in this horrible weather. Today, last year, was the hottest day of the year. It was really hot because the thing came up on my Facebook that I'd obviously done something and it was really yeah, baking. But look at the, how different. It couldn't that be any different. Horrible, could it, isn't moment? it? Horrible. Right, so, um, so this one, we slip two stitches together knit-wise. We knit one. And then we're passing two stitches over. So you've got to treat them as one, even though right. you're doing two. Yeah, and you course. say that's unusual. But... Well, you normally just slip one and pass one stitch, okay. a stitch over, but it just makes... They make a bigger hole. Yeah. So you can see as I'm going along, my holes are coming in the right yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's good. So when you're doing the front of the jumper, you're just doing however many stitches you cast on and just keep going and going and going and going. Or is there, do you have to reduce on the front? So well? when you're doing, yes, the back and the front, you do it. To, let's see, how far do we go? It will tell you how long to make this, yeah. but then you will still do some shaping around the oh, okay. armholes. So, it's not just so that the works in the same way. Yeah, um, you cast off a certain amount and then you're decreasing at the each end. So exactly the same. As you're doing here Technique. on the stage, yeah. But obviously, you've got more stitches yeah. on your needle. Oh, Nicole sent a message in. Let's have a look. Hi, John and Catherine. If I ever lose my knitting and crochet mojo, I just watched some of your recorded shows on YouTube and it soon returned. Choosing which one? Are you choosing which one? You're choosing which one today is to do, are you, Nicola? Ooh, I like that. I like the one with the lacy back. That's my favourite of the day today. Um, and... Oh, which one? What? Oh, the one with property is the one you're wearing. It is really nice. Yeah, yeah. it is lovely, isn't it? I, I would definitely take this home with me if and I could. Can I also <laughs> ask, no, can I also ask, you know the scallopy bit at the bottom, do you knit that straight away or do you add that on afterwards? It's not, that's on, on yours, you look on the bottom of yours, it's like a little scallop thing. 
Sorry. I'm getting and, confused because they've both got scallops. Yes, and the, also you haven't knitted the whole thing. You've only done the samples for it, so it's kind of Absolutely. Like, um, and I did look at this, so I will tell you, um, because I nearly sampled it. So it's quite interesting how you do your little border. You pick these up at the end. Oh, so, so when so, you first start... So when straight, you first right. start, like that, that is my first casting off. Same, right. on, same on the sleeve, same on the front and the back. Uh -huh. um, but you then go back and you pick it up. Yeah, so I pick up all those stitches across. And then your neck border, let's have a look what we do. It's a knit, but what you do, you do... To make this little sco scallop, you, every four or five stitches, you knit lower down than you normally would. Oh, OK. And it pulls it in to make that scallop, scallop shape. Okay. But you do that after. So you finish the whole of the front yes. and the back and then you add yes. it on afterwards. Absolutely. So that's one way you add it on afterwards. Okay. I'm getting confused with that one where you actually start with it. Yes, yeah. Yes. We're going to do that in a minute. Though, we are, we? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I well, no, it's all you. right. It's yeah. when I'm doing lots of patterns, you've got to keep the different ones in your head. Of course you do, yeah. And I get mixed up. Right. I've completely lost where I've got to with oh, my sorry, pattern. Oh, sorry, that's my But fault. don't worry. We'll sorry, find it in sorry. a sec. So we were on the sleeve. I'm on the sleeve. I'm working my way across. Yep. Um, keeping your knit on your post. Keeping my knits on my post. Yeah, see, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're here. Oh, here we go. Linda says, I always get really confused when the yarn forward or the two, slip two fall on the decrease. No idea what that even means, Linda. I get really confused when the yarn forward yeah. or the slip two fall on the decrease. Oh, I see what so you mean. So it's yes. when that bit of the pattern that tells you that first one is yarn forward, but you've actually got to knit two stitches two, yes, together yeah. instead. So if it, if it falls... And it's sort of a bit funny. Obviously, you can't do your yarn forward. You've still got to do your two stitches together. Yes, I see two what you together. mean, Linda, yeah. But you're right. It is, it is, it's nice to do knitting that challenges your brain sometimes. And oh, when yes, you do yes, these yes. sorts, you've just got to think about it so that you get it in the right place. Of course, so yeah. this is one of those. So not a complete beginner one. This yes, is one, well, no, definitely you know, not. if you're a little bit, yeah, a bit uh, more accomplished. Sue's enjoying the weather. She said it justifies times in my sewing room and I melt like an ice cream on hot days. Oh, it's freezing. I had my heater on all day yesterday. Oh, it's just been awful. Mm. My poor my poor girls took the dog out literally as the heavens opened. Oh. And we kept looking out the window and we're going, surely they'll just come back straight away. And they didn't. They stayed out. They plodded round with the dog and everybody came back looking like this. Oh. Absolutely drowned. <laughs> <laughs> Um, every reverse row is just a straightforward purl row. So your pattern row is only on your knit. Um, it's going to come out completely wrong, this, because I have to <laughs> totally oh, sorry, lost where I am. So but it doesn't really matter. So you matter. do all this fancy taking to knitting back and all that yes. yarn over and everything. And then when you go back, you just literally do a row of so, knitting. Yes. So, well, purling. A oh, purling, sorry. But, yeah. but, but um, that doesn't show on the... Well, the thing is, you wouldn't get your nice little holes coming out if you didn't purl back okay. across. Okay. You just get lots of loose stitches. Oh, of course. So, you need to hold them all together. Well, that's you? right, you do. So that's what it's for. So if I can get to the end and then we'll go across and we'll see how, how wrong how I wrong did it. <laughs> because I know I have gone wrong. It's a, it's a more of a, um, a concentrating pattern. Not and a I talking while you're doing it no, pattern. And me throwing other questions at you about scallop. <laughs> but it's okay. Because, I mean, you know, it is that thing with knitting. If you do go wrong, it's not the end of the world because you can and yeah, exactly. and, and do it, can't you? Exactly. Just like you can with your knitting. So we'll just get to the end in any old way. And then we'll go back across and you'll, you'll see. Uh, I've, got to de I've got to decrease on this going back row as well. So at right. the moment, you're decreasing one stitch on each edge. Right. So again... You're decreasing a purl here. So I'm only one. So it's nice and easy. Just knit two stitches together. Right. And then we're just going to purl all the way along. So you see where you can get... Where I get to one where oh, I've just, just had that's my... That's it. They keep that... 
that's it. Yeah, where I've had my yarn over, yeah. you can see that if I started to make more holes, that wouldn't be a proper stitch at the moment. Yes, it is just looped over the needle. Yeah. So the fact that then you purl back across it, that then turns it into a proper, right. a proper stitch, that's why. It's because you said about, you know, knitting uses up less yarn than crochet. Um, and that's because when you do crochet, you're often putting your yarn around for each stitch, maybe more than once, aren't right, you? Right, okay. Whereas with knitting, you're only really ever putting your yarn around your needle once. Yeah, Hannah was the same as me. She thought two sticks more wool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just, just, you know, if you don't know these things. But if you feel the difference between the two the two tops over there, the crochet one and the knitted one, you'll feel that the crochet is a, a thicker fabric yes, that yeah, you yeah, make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is, you know, something something to bear in mind. It does make a different kind of fabric. How wrong did you go then? Oh, I've gone really wrong. Okay. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I just think my... Um, yeah, I've got holes in funny places because I've lost count. All right, don't worry, because we can so, move on to the next one because yes. we're moving on. Because that was all you were going to show on that one. It was really to, just to how to make sure you start it properly and keep your eye on it and and not to lose count. And don't have me <laughs> wittering on in the background <laughs> while you're doing it. Yeah. So these two here, oops, the one that Catherine's doing, no, the one Catherine's wearing is this one. So you get your five balls of cotton, yarn, double knit. You get your instructions, goes from a size, oh glasses John, 30 bust to a 44 inch bust. And the actual finished measurements is 47 and a half inches on the bust, so it's got nice ease on it there. You can do it with or without sleeves. And all of that there is 17 pounds and 99 pence. The what, sorry? Quarter of the stock of that one's gone, of the grey one's gone. Then we've also got Spice. Same design, different colour. That's the one I've got here. I can show you that one. Now, this is the one without sleeves. This, this is, um, you can put sleeves on it. So, um, that's without sleeves. So, I'm presuming the instructions, it will tell you if you choose one, one way or the other. Absolutely, yeah. yes. And you've got enough yarns, so that's fine. So, there you go. Oh, you'll have left over if you're not putting sleeves in. So you get five balls of the cotton yarn, the spice plus the pattern. You need size, what was it, four? Four millimetres. Four needles, millimetre yes. knitting needles to do that one. Available on the website if you haven't got any. I think you need a slightly smaller one, three and a quarter just for your um, hems. Okay. Yeah. Lovely, that's that one. So then we'll move on now to, oh, the, oh yeah, three, the, we're just putting the three and a quarter um, knitting needles through as well. So now we're moving on to the crochet, uh, not crochet, knitted back one, Ooh, which is this one. So you get four balls of the beautiful soft pink, plus the pattern, and it's lovely, isn't it? Because the back of it is all the lacy, and the front is looks very, very simple and gorgeous. And it has this really like delicate scalloping around the, the hem and the neck and the and the sleeve. So that's the pink one, which um, Catherine's got over there. And then I've got the grey one here. So you get four balls again. So it'll be the same sizes again, same um, body shapes. $14.99, that one. That's really, really cute, isn't it? So what are you going to show us on this So I'm one? going to show you how to do this really cute little scalloped edge. Okay. And we actually start with that. So Can I ask one question for yes. you too? The front of that, is that just normal... Knit one, purl one. Or it is. Normal stocking stitch. Stocking stitch. Yeah. Knit a row, purl a row, stocking stitch. So it's, a, it's quite a nice, easy, uh -huh. easy knit. And this is part, the scalloped edge. You're not picking up any stitches oh, for you this. Start you with start it. with oh, okay. this. Start yeah. With it. Okay. Which is really nice. Yeah. The pattern's very similar to what I almost showed you on the previous yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> it looks almost, almost like the bits in the middle are slightly bigger. Then from to, to a, to uh, I think they are. Eye. Yes, it they are. Like it's very slightly different, yeah. but um, but not significantly. Yeah, no. So you cast on however many stitches you need, um, and just, also just explain the colour you're using isn't any of the colours we've got available today. Because I believe from what uh, Rebecca Reed was telling me that this 
Marina cotton is brand new. I don't think they've ever had it before. Oh, wow. And that's so like, they've been waiting for it to come in. Yeah. Yes, which so is please not, don't be thinking that what you're going to get is what Catherine's knitting. Ours is a, the two different colours. Yeah. Right. Um, so we've cast on our normal number of things and we've done four rows of stocking stitch. So that is knit a row, purl a row. There's the scallop. Well, I'm going to show you that now. Oh. I'm going to show you how to do it now because it's, it, yes, you don't start with the scallop. Oh, okay. So our next row, our fifth row, is what's called the pico row. We're going to knit one, yarn forward and knit two together and we're going to do that all the way along. Yarn forward, knit two together. So we've already sort of realised that if you, you do this sort of yarn forward and knitting two together you get holes don't you when you get I'm not talking along. I'm not putting your I'm not getting the blame for you going <laughs> wrong again <laughs> this is easier this one there's not as much counting in this one so so I thought I thought this was a really nifty way of doing your bottom edge actually because yeah. it's quite nice not having to pick up stitches lots of people don't like picking up stitches at the so end so what exactly are you doing then so I'm putting my yarn forward and then I'm knitting two stitches together. So I'm not going to decrease my number of stitches because although I'm knitting two together, because I've got my yarn forward, it makes a new one right. each time. So I'm keeping the same number of stitches, but as I when I go back across on the reverse, uh, yes, 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 it yes. will make the holes. Let me just. The one thing you find, I very, very much like working with cotton, but if you're not careful, you can sometimes split cotton. What, more easy than you can split more? Yeah, yeah. So you just want to watch out for that when you are using it. But I really like how it feels yeah. on your hands. And to wear. It's nice and cool yeah. to wear. There was a designer called Christopher New who used to make hundreds of these amazing cotton knit jumps. I used to buy them all the time. Um, and then he decided not to supply them into the UK anymore. And he just supplies them to the um, Chinese and Japanese market now. But I loved them. I used to, every season I'd go and buy, and they were way too expensive for what they were. But I loved them. We used to wear them all the time. It's like, now you know you know how I come to work now with different coloured shirts and patterned shirts. I used to be like that with these jumpers Did when you? I worked in films. Right, so I've done that all the way along. Yarn forward and knit two together. We're going to do three rows, starting with a pearl row of stocking stitch. Okay. How do you know to start with pearl? It tells me to. Okay. It says, beginning with a pearl row, work three rows in stocking stitch. Gotcha. Also, that's the wrong side of your work. Yeah. And you've been purling on that side before. I mean, occasionally you do it the opposite way around to make a pattern, but we're, we're not in in yeah. this instant. These grow, these grow quite quickly. They're quite a quick knit, knit uh -huh. all of them. Do you get tired fingers doing knitting? Um, not really fingers. I have to be a little bit careful with my wrists. Oh, okay. I get, bit, I get carpal tunnel, so I can't do too much. Oh, no. Because it's quite heavy on the wrists. Oh. I wonder if we're going to sell knitting machines. I don't know. That, they, used to be, they used to be in fashion, didn't they? And people would sit there and made a yeah oh yeah Way <laughs> sort of a noise. <laughs> okay, so you can see that we've got some little holes going all the way ah, along. Okay. Now I'm just going to knit two more rows, and then you'll be able to see how oh, the scallop like works. Any scallops, yeah. yeah, well, I need to just do a couple more, and then you'll see. Okay, that's why I've only done quite a short sample. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that you're not waiting for me to like knit across seventy nine stitches. Yes. <laughs> No, says, my darling, beautiful late mum used to knit all my jumpers and cardigans. She was just amazing. I don't knit because the sound of the needle reminds me of my mum. Oh, no. My nan used to knit constantly. Absolutely. She was never without knitting or crochet on the yeah. go. My mum recently sorted out all her old patterns oh, and, and she's given them to me. And it's like, it's, that's my, it's my childhood in a box. Oh. I remember all my favourite jumpers yeah. and things that she made for me. It's fantastic. Oh, no, I had one my nan made for me. It was bottle green. It had like a crossover neckline. And this bit 
turned over so things make a little collar and I just loved it and I find photos of myself like at eight or nine wearing it and I just loved that jumper so much. I think my favourite, my favourite was a beige one and it had like a leaf pattern going up here and it had a big polo neck oh. and it had a kangaroo pocket oh. and it was really snuggly. That was my favourite. <laughs> one more and then I can show you. Yeah. All will be revealed. Good. Because I don't know how you're going to get the scallops at the bottom. No, I know. It's, it's going to be magic. You're going to love it. I'm, I'm going really to be easy. amazed. Yeah. I'll get my amazed face ready. <laughs> or maybe slightly underwhelmed, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so now, do you find knitting or crochet easier? Which one? Yeah. Mm. What did you start doing? Knitting. Oh. I've knitted for a lot longer than oh, I've crocheted. Okay, so. Because just being here on Yarn Lane, obviously I knew nothing about either of them. And I, knitting still befuddles me. Whereas I can kind of understand crochet, but really? what you're doing there is like, I'm just like, I don't know what she's doing. I wouldn't be able to do it. I couldn't do it. couldn't do it. But there's only two stitches with knitting. Yes, I know. But it's just like, I don't know. I think it's, it's like maybe two more, sticks. That's what it's, it is. <laughs> maybe. Right. Right. So I've done this. And then what happens is when you put it all together, let me try and get it so I can show you, this folds up oh. and you stitch the bottom bit up. That's cheating. And can you see how it's going to make the little scallop? So if uh, I if I uh, get if I just yeah, get yeah, that yeah, one, yeah. so, so you, you can see, yes. Yeah, so it's got um, a stitch, so you can see on on there. Yeah. And they've turned it up and just carefully stitched that. So do you up do that when you there. finish the jumper. So you would do that then right at the end. Oh, so while you're knitting it, you've just got a, so, a row of holes. Basically. So yes. Yeah, so from there now, I would then knit up the rest of the front of the sweater. Because it's all stocking stitch up the That's front That's right. And then <coughs> you go back at the end. And when you've obviously put your sides together, you'd also stitch around that. OK, hem. so that's so really clever, actually. Yeah, no, it is. It is, it is. Sim really simple so as well. So you're saying as with your sleeve, you cast off and you just do normal whatever you're doing on your sleeve. So when you get up to your neck, let me read, let me just very quickly see, do we, so we do pick up the neck to do the scallop neck edge. Right. But it's so that you can go all the way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's done in exactly the same way. Yeah. Pick it up, you knit your four rows, you do your little holy row, and then you other bit and it folds down. Okay, so, so if you were making that at home, would you knit the front and the sleeves first and then do the lacy bit last? Well, knowing me, I'd do the interesting bit first. Oh, I'll go too. <laughs> but then, but then you're like, oh, I've got all the boring bits to do now. And then, and then I'd, and then I'd stop and get my mum to finish it off for <gasps> me or something. Oh. That jump, the jumper I was wearing earlier, I knitted sort of, I knitted the back and half a sleeve, and she finished it off for me. Oh, did you get bored <laughs> of projects? Then? Um, well, I do, but I also run out of time on things, or I get way laid well, with other right, yeah, things so and busy, stuff yeah, like so that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. So that's, has that got a name then, that scalloping, turning up? What do they, they've called it a Pico Edge, actually. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Hannah calls it a pasty. She calls things that <laughs> looks like the corner of a pasty. Edge pasty. Yeah, I know what you mean, actually. But when you said Pico the first time, what did you, sh Hannah suddenly shouted, oh, Pico. In tatting. Oh. And okay tatting. and you get it in crochet as well you get a pico edge but that's done with like little chains but it makes little little sort of bobbles little oh, okay. scallops again so yeah oh pico right hang on a couple of messages before we do those uh she needed me a starsky uh, cardigan i adored it that's low carol said i just finished four baby cardigans and a blanket ready for my cousin's new baby born oh, yesterday lovely. oh carol she'll love it claire said i like knitting and crochet if you go wrong on intarsia knitting you can drop those stitches and crochet them back into that column. If you go wrong in crochet, it's still possible, but much more difficult to cut into. Oh, I've no idea what any of that means. Right, mm. let me do these then. So I'll do the pink one first, which is the one that Catherine had on her desk just then. Half the stock of this one has gone. So you get the pattern and you get the four balls, and that's enough to make the biggest one. You can have it with sleeves or with... Or with, oh no, they've both got sleeves, haven't they? No, you couldn't do that one without sleeves, I don't think, could you? No, I think this no. one is, is a sleeve. Yeah. Oh no, you, it does say sleeveless. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can do a sleeveless no one in. as well, or a, or a cap sleeve. Okay. 
Currently the most popular in the pink. In the pink is the most popular so far in the show. I've got a question for you from Diane. Could you pick up, no, hang on. Could you pick up the cast, oh, hang on. Could you pick up the cast up the cast on edge across to save sewing up the bottom at the end of making the top, Diane? Right, I don't understand the beginning of that. Could you pick up- I think she's got an extra word in there. Yeah. So could you pick up the cast, uh... Cast up on the edge across to save. Oh, hang on, Jane's asked a question. Diane, we'll come back to that in a minute. Here we go. If you knit into the edge and fold of Pico, in saves sewing and you get a nice border. Yes, yes, you can. So yes. what does that mean? So when you then come to then do the next bit, so you fold it up. Yeah. Um, oh, and you actually knit. So then when you start to knit, you can catch that cast on oh, edge. So it's, I see. So it's, it's knitted it's holding into the first it, yes. row of things. Um, and you can do that. It doesn't tell you to in these particular no. instructions, but you could. But that way, you know, it can never come unpicked because if you sew it. Well, that's true. And then if your sewing's not strong or gets caught or something. Yes. But in, in the instructions, it tells you to do it the way you did it. Yes. Okay, perfect. And we ask our experts to do it the way, you know, it says in the pattern. Right, okay, then in that one, I've got the grey one as well, which is the one on the wall behind me. There it is. Oh, <laughs> exactly the same technique. Grey, silver grey, they've called this one. Silver grey. Silver bells. Fourteen ninety nine. So you get the pattern and you get the four balls of the cotton yarn. So that's the knitting done. That's the knitting done. We'll now move on to crochet, which is the white one that you've got there. Yes. And this is more like a scallop design to it, isn't it, this one? It is. This was the Millie Mason's one. Okay. Yes, so this it's got a really nice little sort of shell design, hasn't yes. it? Yes, and as you say, it feels heavier than the knitted one, doesn't it? Well, actually, you've got six balls of wool. That could be why. Oh, not wool, cotton, cotton. So you get six balls of cotton, and you get the instructions. Now, this will probably be the same size, but I'll just double check. Oh, it goes from a size 32 to 34 bust to a 38 to 40 bust. So I'm lying, it's different. Uh, and you need six balls to do the short sleeve. Five balls to do the sleeveless biggest one. Oh, look, I'm shaking now. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? Okay, so you do need a crochet ook to do this one. Oh, I'll, ask, I'll let Catherine tell me what size she used. Right, okay, so you get that's the white one that Catherine had over here. Here's the blue one, which I'll pick off the wall in a second. So there's the blue one. Six balls of the cotton, plus the pattern. And again, this one can have a sleeve or be sleeveless. There's the blue one. It's a lovely shade of blue, isn't it? Look, it's more like lilac -y than blue, isn't it? I'm wrong again. Elliot says it's definitely blue, John. It's got a lilac tinge to it, I'd say. I'd call it lavender blue. Lavender, thank you. Lavender blue. Lavender blue, dilly dilly, lavender green. Oh. When I am rich, dilly dilly, you shall be queen. Yeah, when I'm king, I think it is. When what I'm king, I rich. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be rich than the king at the moment. <laughs> oh, don't, let's not get started about We can't discuss that. But what the news has come out about the 85 interview. Anyway, I'll tell you about it later. We're not going to talk about it now. Right. This is crochet now. This is it? crochet, exactly. Yes, absolutely. So we're back to we're down to one hook. Good. <laughs> I can't understand this one a bit better. <laughs> um, so it's um, a four mil hook. Oh, four mil hook. Four mil. Four mil hook. Um, but you do want to check your tension because everybody, people do crochet quite differently. I mean, that's that's quite a tight tension when I feel that compared to mine. I can feel that mine is much looser. Oh, is that Millie? Yeah, but Millie's, Millie. might, Millie, Millie's maybe better than mine. Hers okay. may be closer to the, the tension that the pattern requires. So you would want to do yourself a little tension. Does that affect the size then? If it your would. Different? When you're doing a garment, you want to check your tension because you don't, okay. want to, you don't want to knit it and then discover it doesn't fit. So for absolute to beginners, be how do you know what your tension is on here? So it will tell you at the start of the pattern. Oh yeah, I can see it. Yeah, so what does it say? It says it is important to check your tension before commencing the garment. Four TR... Trebles. 
Four trebles times four rows equals one inch by two inches. Yeah. If smaller, use a larger hook. If larger, use a smaller hook. Yeah. So, that so you, you can, do that first. So Yeah, so you want to do it in the yarn that you're using and just test that out to make sure it's going to work. Okay. It's one of those things that, um, it, <laughs> you know, you're tempted to skip. But if you do want it to fit you properly, you should do it. Yeah, exactly. It's like measuring yourself before you start a dressmaking yeah. pattern. So, same idea. Okay, so we have got in this nice pattern, really just a combination of trebles and chains. So if you know how to do a chain, you know how to do a treble, you can make this top. It's one of those ones that looks more complicated that's, that's than That's way you more think. complicated yeah. than that, doesn't it? And that's what's really nice about crochet, actually, because mostly crochet uses only two or three stitches it's the order you put them in. Yeah. So once you know those basic ones, you can go ahead. So also, I've, doesn't it look very rich in the cotton? It, it's you know, lovely. Kind of gives it a you get real... a really nice... I always think you can really see the definition of the stitches yes, with, with yes, cotton. That's, yes, that's what it um, is, yeah. Much better than with um, yarn, okay. wool, yeah, yeah. Um, or acrylic. And when I teach crochet, we tend to use cotton because you can see better where you're going in. Is cotton usually more expensive than wool, then? Often, yeah. yeah. It yeah. often is. These are actually make really good well, prices. Good price at 29, really good prices. Isn't yes, it? they are. Okay, so I've done the first couple of rows just to show you what the it starts to look like. Right. So I am on row three. So hang on, before you do that, so yes. across the bottom, like, well, not the ribbing, but the base, the start of the jumper, the hem of the jumper. Yes. What's that there? So we've done a foundation chain. Right. We've done a row of doubles all the way across and then they call it a rib row and that is just a double. And did you turn it round and work back so when you've done your first row do you turn it yes back to front so you're you? working backwards and forwards yeah. on okay. this yes absolutely because we did something the other day i can't remember what it was now we did one where we didn't turn it round at all and i'm so used to you turning it round and then we did one pattern where you don't turn it round i couldn't remember what it was for well, sometimes was when it? you go round and round when you're working in rounds you don't turn it round uh, i think it was wasn't it um sam sabido's um granny squares no well, you don't turn, usually turn a granny square round. Oh, okay. No and way. I mean, I did Tunisian crochet a couple of weeks ago and you don't turn that round. Oh, okay. So, right. you know, it just depends. I'm learning. What you're, I'm when, learning. You, when you work crochet in rows, yes, you normally turn right. it round. But when you work crochet in rounds, you don't tend to. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Right. <coughs> right. Okay. So you've done those dub. Do you dub know what? I don't think I realised how complicated it could be. No. <laughs> because, because I've knitted... For so many years, it's kind of you just know it. Yeah. It's like you just know how to read. But you know, you yes. don't remember learning. Exactly. But then when someone starts to ask you, you actually realise it's quite. There's a lot more to it sometimes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like driving, isn't it? When you first drive, you think I'm never going to be able to push that, push that, look there, pull that, <laughs> and yet you just get in a car now and just yeah. drive. You don't, don't you? think about no, it. Don't yeah. Think about it. So, right. Okay. So. So if you're new to it, as long as you practice, you'll be fine. Yep. That's the thing. So we're going to start our row with three trebles. You're doing that to bring your hook up so that it's, because you're going to do longer stitches, treble stitches, you do the chain to bring your hook up to the right level, else you'd get weird, weird core, weird edges. Yep. We're going to treble in the same space. So that is down at the bottom there. Okay. Then we're going to, do in the next treble so that that's nice focus here on, you. Yeah. we're going to do one treble three chain and one treble so all into that same space so this is making the little three chain is making a little kind of loop that you will eventually do more trebles round on the next row so it's making you a nice space for where you're going to work some right, of your okay. pattern next time then we're going to do another chain. Then we're going to miss the first two trebles. We've got seven trebles in this little sort of shell here. Uh -huh. We're going to miss the first two and we're going to do one treble in the next three stitches. So they're the three central ones on your little sort of scallop. So one, two, so here. And you can see, you can see the top of my stitches. You've got a little kind of V shape, haven't yeah. you? So that's how you count them to see where you're going. I think they're much more obvious in the, in the cotton though. I think they are too. Yeah. yeah, I had a lady in the other day doing a one-to-one -one with me and we decided it was much easier with the cotton because she could really see then what she was up to. So we're doing three trebles there. And if you look, they're the, they're, 
those three trebles are like these three trebles here. Yeah. So the pattern's going to be very similar, but it just kind of moves around. Yeah. So they're not all in line. So we've done one treble in the next two stitches. Missed the last two trebles of the group. One chain. And then we're going to repeat that from the start to the end. She so said. I, I've lost it. I I've can't lost I where my word. star is. <laughs> Okay, so in this treble here that's all by itself, we're going to do a little we're going to single chain. So in here, we're going to do our treble, three chain, treble. Because then that's going to make our thing for the next row. Okay, single chain. Miss the first two, trebles into the next one. So we have a row where we do this, making the little frame almost for the scallop. And then the next row along, we will actually put the scallops in. Uh -huh. I can see why some, <coughs> this one doesn't have a chart. This one just has um, writing on it. Yes. I can see why some people who have, and I don't want to, I'm not dissing anybody, but people have reading like dyslexia or something like that. If they looked at a page like this, You'd look at that, and that would that uh, frightens me just looking well, at Well, absolutely, the and it's quite it's because it's not it's not just a two row pattern either. It it is literally row by row. Yes. So you have got to read each row because they're all very slightly different. Yeah. That's partly to make the edges right. This part in the middle, when you read it, is pretty much the same. Yeah. That works the same, but on the ends, so that you stay straight and you don't start to increase and get weird shapes they're all slightly different to make it work. Yeah. So that's why you've got a different thing per row. But yes, you have got to, again, I wouldn't say it was an absolute complete beginners because you have got quite a no, lot well, no, so to keep your eye on and it, to yes. follow. It's not like you're yes. going to learn the row and then think, well, I can just do that 27 no. times. You've got to stop at the end of every single row and then read what the next row is. You have. But again, so I, I I don't like knitting if it's and crochet if it's too boring. I quite like it when I've got to sort of go, okay, what's this? Yes. But then can you have noise on? Can you have the telly on or the music on or anything like that? Or do you have to have silence? No, oh, no. Um, no, we have the telly on. But do you know what? There's often no, not much good on telly. There's not much telly I actually sit and watch. Okay. There's a lot I listen to. Right. Um, so you don't but apart to... from the sewing bee, I don't, there's not that. <laughs> sewing bee and glow up, they're the ones we oh, watch I at the moment. Oh, I love glow up. I know. <laughs> but also, but also um, I, last time, maybe I watched the last two series after they'd been on, but I'm only getting one a week on my thing. Yes, not... I think it's new. It's new, so we're only getting one a week. Oh, so last the last two series, you could yeah. just binge watch the whole series. This, uh, this is a show that where they have makeup artists, um, young fantastic. makeup artists doing different. It's like 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 all of them, like sewing bee, like everything, but they're doing makeup on makeup. themselves and on models and things like that. It's fantastic. But they do really good stuff, don't they? Because they do like TV makeup. Yeah. And oh no, then no, they I do think, stuff they, for I think this year, and... I really like this year's yeah. uh, contestants. They're, they're not quite as. Um, Emotional as sometimes they no, have been. No, <laughs> there's some, yeah, they're, they're really good. Okay, so if I'm nearly at the end of this little bit, and then I will <coughs> have you show watched you this week's just gone by. We have, yes. Oh, okay, that's yes. fine. I won't say anything in case people at home haven't, but there's one girl who I thought was definitely, definitely going this week, and then she just pulled out the hat, this incredible fantasy yeah. uh, makeup, and it was like. Was that the same girl that was couldn't mix her colours a minute ago? And here she is doing. I'm not going to say who or what. I think what's interesting about it is that you realise that there's so many different sorts of makeup, yeah, aren't there? Yeah. yeah which well, when I worked on films, I used to spend all my time on the makeup bus because it was fun being on the makeup oh, really? bus with the girls and just I never learned how to do it, but it is fascinating all the different techniques. Okay, so when I get to the end here, I've got to make sure that I do. A treble and three chain and a treble into my last one. So this is why you've just got to kind of keep track because the ends are different on each row uh -huh. to keep the pattern. <coughs> and then two trebles in my three chain turning space. So that was the three chain that I did at the start of the, the previous row. I'm yeah. going to do two trebles in there. Okay. And then we're going to turn it around. 
because we're working in rows and we're going to come back along. So we've got uh, three chain and a treble in the first treble. Then we're going to do a single chain and then you'll see where this, um, where I've done the little, the three chain space on the, from the row before, I'm going to do seven treble all into that bit and that's okay. going to make you nice score. Uh, okay. So if I do that, Now, because you turn it backwards and forwards, does that mean there's no front and back? <clears throat> um, well, there is. It does look different on one side. It does look slightly different. Right. Yeah, so that's your right side. Okay. One, two. Uh, Marion says, when I have trouble following pattern, it's, uh, uh, it's because the writing is too close together. I write out the correct size or sometimes even just the pattern panel. First, it's bigger. And secondly, I can write all over it without ruining the pattern. That's a good idea. And Claire says, I prefer a chart. I'm very visual. Yeah, the charts, it's nice when you get them and they have both. Yeah. And they, you can then check it against something. But writing it out is a good idea because sometimes you look at it and you just think, and actually, if you write it out in long form, then you can follow it a little yeah, bit yeah, more yeah. easily. So, so can you see there, it's made my little scallop by doing seven uh -huh. in the chain space. Nice. So that's how we will carry on with it. Okay. Uh, cool will do both, don't they? They do patterns and um, uh, charts, don't they? Written and charts in their, all their patterns. So we do a chain. Then where we've got that little group of three, we're just doing a single treble in uh -huh. that one. Uh, you, you, you're going to go away and have a go now, aren't you? Not yet. Not you're on not that one, I'm not. You're not confused at all, are you? <laughs> no, I have to say, this one is the most confusing out of all of them. I, the other day, I was kind of getting... Com I was thinking, oh, I could try this, I could try this, but I don't think I could try your one. Half the stock of the white one has gone. We haven't got the tin, the pink that Catherine's using. The, half the stock of the white one has gone. And blue's on the other side there. But it is, it's a really, it is a very pretty pattern, as you can see it coming up, isn't it? Oh, hang on, we can't it's, see that. Sorry. There we go. It is a, I think, a really nice, pretty pattern. You can see my scallop oh. starting to come. Oh, hang on, hang on. Come on, Elliot. <laughs> We've got to go at one. There. Yeah. So it is, of course, you have got to follow it to make sure you put in them in the right place, but it is actually only chains. No, 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 exactly, exactly. Yeah, it it's is. just keeping track of where you're going. But you will, apart from the edges where you need to know what you're doing, this part, as you do it, you you quickly realise that you where you're going to put the seven because yeah. you've made your little thing for it and where yeah. you're only going to put a single one. Brilliant. Thank you. So when are you back next then, do you know? On the 7th of June. Well, it's not long. That's a Monday. 7th of June, that'll be... Oh, no, it's with me. Is it? It's me. I'm doing all... You don't know this. I'm doing all the Mondays in June, just so you know. As well and, as and do you know else. what? I'll have been doing it for a year. No, it, yeah, longer than me. <laughs> So it's your first year anniversary on it that is. day. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Right. What would you like me to say, Hannah? What would you like me to do? White crochet one is the most popular. I nearly mixed the white and the blues then. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six balls of the cotton yarn plus the pattern uh, for £20.99. and pence. Lovely. And then the blue one. Smoky blue. Let me show you. Here it is. Smoky blue. It's because we, we've called it every different colour blue. Lavender blue, lilac blue, <laughs> smoky blue, blue blue. Oh, I've got a quick <coughs> question from Jennifer. What size is what, Jennifer? Uh, what size do the jumpers fit? Well, the crocheted ones, uh, Jennifer, are... Uh, sizes 32 to 40 bust and the knitted ones go from a 30 to a 48 I think they were oh no 44 30 to a 44 that's what the knitted ones go to right is that us done uh, yarn lane will be back tomorrow do they come up true to size oh well they will come up true to size if you do your tension square if you do your tension square they will come up true to size it's in the pattern as well, it's, it says the finished size because it's got E, so the 44 comes up at 47 and a half and things like that. Yarn Lane is back tomorrow with me, with uh, Denny Gould tomorrow, and it's I Knits tomorrow. I Knits. Oh, 
We're doing children's knitting tomorrow. I was going to point something on the set, but we haven't got it here. Children's knitting tomorrow. Uh, but I also will be back tomorrow morning on uh, Sang Street at 8 o'clock. Thank you, Catherine. We'll see you in June. And thank you for watching. Make sure you check out your baskets. See you tomorrow morning on Sang Street at 8 o'clock. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools? And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the program guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! <laughs>